Hello Automators, thanks for tuning in again. Samsung has produced a couple of different web interfaces that you can bring up on a PC, on a tablet, all kinds of different places. So today I'm gonna to walk you through what it's really great at, what it's not really great at, show you how to use this system, and maybe you're gonna get a really great idea for managing your own home. Now this interface is good at a few things that you're probably gonna to wanna to stay and see the details on. You can see it's really great with some summary information, and it's gonna be faster than using the application in a lot of cases for getting to information Information and seeing what your home has within it. So I could jump through everything from locations, hubs, devices, etc. It's also really great to search through your whole system. And it's really great for building a smart home dashboard. So let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna walk you through this whole system. You should learn a lot, be able to do a lot after this. The first thing you have to do is get to this new interface. Now, if you just head to my.smartthings.com, you'll end up on this kind of an interface. This is actually part of the solution, but it's still in beta, it's not perfect. There's a lot that's gotta go on here. Um, but if you go to that page, then you won't be getting to kind of what I'm talking about for the most part today. If you go to my.smartthings.com slash advanced, you'll be asked to log in just like you would on the my.smartthings.com page. But once you've done that, you have a very different interface. So here we are on that main page. You can see it's called the advanced web app. Now, right off the bat, it's giving us some explanation of what we've got going on in SmartThings. 244 devices registered in two locations and three devices without a location. I don't even know how I did that. Uh, 226 of the devices are in 20 rooms. 21 devices are not in a room. 196 of them are online and 51 of them are offline. Yeah, that's right. I unplug a lot of stuff. Now, you can also just go into managing your locations, managing your hubs, and controlling your devices, and you can just go to their website for more. You also have your account up here. Obviously, I'm not showing you my account, but you can manage that, you can get some support, and you can log out, and then log into a different account if you'd ever like. But down the left side of this, and it, it might initially show up this way, you can see the three lines up at the top here. You click that, expand it, and now we have our locations, our hubs, our devices, our scenes, our installed apps, and that My Smart Things portal. So clicking that takes you to that first interface I showed you, and then you can sign out. The locations, this is the same as clicking here. So actually on the word locations, you can click on that, or you can click on your locations here. Goes to the same place, same with hubs, same with devices. So hu your hubs, same here. But you can also click the arrow down and go into your different locations if you have multiple set up. So I have a couple and that's just because I do testing. It's not really because I need the multiple locations or have two homes. Same with the hubs, same with the devices. You can see how long that devices list gets though when you do that. But you can go directly to any of your device pages. Same with your scenes, they're all here and even with your installed apps. Now, I accidentally clicked on installed apps, but there you go. You can see that the whole interface, it's pretty quick to jump around. Now if we just go to the locations spot, uh, you can see the location name, the ID, that's probably not gonna be a big deal to you, the country, who owns it in your home, uh, and the time zone that the system is currently in. You can even see latitude and longitude if you put that in, you can get that out, and you can click on that, and it's gonna take me to a map that I can't show you because then you'd all show up at my house. Or hopefully you would not show up at my house. Then you can edit the name. Anytime you're seeing this little icon, you have the ability to edit the name. Then you can click the check mark to save it. So if I wanna change this whole system to Lighting System 2, I just renamed my whole location. That would show up in the SmartThings app. If I want to go in and see more details, 
I can click on the actual link. Now we kind of have a page format here that keeps showing up in this. We have the location name. Again, you're gonna see that edit icon. You can go in, edit if you'd like. And we have these little question marks that give you additional information about whatever it is you're looking at. All this information, you can't change a lot of it. Obviously you can change the temperature scale and you can change your mode. This is a big benefit to having this. If you're using modes in SmartThings, you can adjust them right here. You can also add a new location in this whole system. And there are three different things that you can jump to. Now, you can jump down to room. As you go into the rooms, you have the ability to edit them. And one of the useful things that I've found already with this is when I go into the SmartThings application, at least the last time I tried this, uh, when I add a room, it'll tell me you have a limit of 20. I've been able to add 21 here. So this doesn't seem to have the same restriction as the app right now. And I'm wondering if there's other restrictions that have gone away as well. One of the great things about this interface is you can search. So anytime you want to search for a specific thing, you can just type that into this box. So you can see I just put in TE and uh, this is actually the room I added to give me my 21st extra tester because you know I test things. Now there are some fields that are not necessarily searchable so you know I could try and look for June but that's not working. See the modified the modified it's not always working. Uh, I find some of the IDs and things like that can't be searched. You'll find that within each of these different things. So here's my events uh, and this is, again, like I can't search for the date, but I could search for TV. And you can see that going on and off. You can see uh, the values of the, the power going through it. You can see all those values in my home. Good for you. Uh, you can also search for the device name over here. So it's working on both of those fields. And in some cases, I think I can get some of these attributes. So there you go, energy, let's try and do meter. And it is keeping this capability uh, as a searchable thing. This is allowing me to see all of the events taking place in this location. So this is everything going on. You see I have 600 rows. SmartThings in general keeps seven days worth of data. So you're not gonna see more than that in any of these. And you can't export it now, but you can copy an event. So I just copied that value 60 to my clipboard on my computer. I don't know if that's going to be useful to anyone. But anytime you see that, that is something that uh, you can copy is that icon. You can also delete if you see this icon. So this summarizes a location. Again, we can jump to the other location, but let's go on to our hubs. Now hubs are below a location. So you're gonna have the locations at the top and then you can have multiple hubs in every location. And so you can see that they have a location name associated with them. You can click to go back to that location to get those details. You have the ability to rename them right here. You can copy, you can search, it's all the same stuff. But let's go into one. So here we are on our SmartThings V3 Hub. That's what I've named this one. There's a lot on this page that will really help you in a lot of ways. The hub name, okay, we have the hub ID, we have some of this information. If you're ever working with SmartThings support because something's gone wrong, Lots of this information at the top is going to be really important, including your MAC address, your local IP, the serial number, those kinds of things, and especially the firmware version on your hub. They'll want to know that for sure. You also have the ability to put your hub in Z-Wave exclusion mode, which means you can get rid of Z-Wave products. So we just turn that on. It's going for 15 seconds. If I go to any of my Z-Wave devices and I do what is required of that device to exclude the product, you're, you can remove a Z-Wave device, which can be very hard to do. And this is like three menus deep in the SmartThings app. So I really like that. Again, if you're talking to SmartThings support, they might ask you to dump the hub logs out and send it to them. Below that is called characteristics. 
Now this is really gonna help you if you're not familiar with all of the things that your hub can do or you're just looking for a quick understanding. Hey, do I have Z-Wave? Well, here it is. It says it's available. Same with Zigbee, same with Matter, same with Thread, same with Edge drivers, same with local virtual devices, even LAN availability. So can I connect to devices on my network here at home? Yeah, it's right there. The other things that might be helpful to you, like driver memory limit status, I have a, we have a soft limit set within the firmware. They might ask you those kinds of things if you're getting support. But in general, you're just gonna be able to see that your hub has thread and whether or not it required external hardware. So if you buy a hub without thread available on it, did you have to buy like the little Zigbee slash thread dongle that Samsung sells? That's what they're talking about, external hardware. You'd see this on things like uh, the M7 monitor that I'm working on right now. Below that are all of your driver channels. So these are the edge driver channels that you have signed up for. You can click on any of those. They'll take you right to the page. You can go into the available drivers. You can select which ones, install and uninstall these. So these are already what you have on your hub, but this is a quick way to get to those edge drivers and install or uninstall them if they're not working for you. So again, you can search and you can organize any of these by a name or by any of these fields. So they're workable tables and then yeah you can go to all these different ones now within the driver channel so each driver channel can have multiple drivers that you've installed so even if you've gone and subscribed to AOTech's driver channel you might not necessarily have installed those drivers now you can see I have and if I'd like I can search for that and I just get that list now, these you can't click on, you can't go into them, but you can see your other drivers uh, and you just be able to look at them, see your list. It's a very quick list. Down here at the bottom is related to Zigbee and Z-Wave, and I imagine we'll see Thread show up at some point here, but it's not here today. Now, is your Zigbee turned on? What channel is it on? Are you allowing things to rejoin unsecurely? Are you able to use Zigbee 3? And what's the node ID? Now, today, we're not seeing visuals of our Zigbee or Z-Wave networks. And actually, I don't have a lot of the other information I'd like on the Z-Wave networks, but I'll show you some other information that we have in a little bit here. So uh, you can see that I'm allowing updates. All of these settings are things you can only do in the app today, but you can see the status of them here. There are statements that we will see some of the editing features come into this interface. So if you're watching this, you know, half a year from now, I'm betting you're seeing more of the little pencil icons. Same thing here for Z-Wave. Uh, and you can see whether you have S2 on your hub, that's a great thing to know. But let's go to devices. I think this is gonna be one of the more interesting ones for a lot of people. Now again, I can search, I can filter by my different locations, and I can add a new device. So I've just called my device AYL test, and I, look, I can pick from all these things. Okay, well, let's choose button. Let's put it in the location, rest of home, and hit add. What have I just created? Well, I haven't put it in a room, but I can drop it into a room very quickly. So there you go, I could hit add room two. Now I'm in a device. What is this? It's a virtual button. So they didn't tell you what you were doing, but I just created a virtual button. That's all you can do with that. Uh, if I don't want this device, I've got to come out here to my list and I can search for AYL and here I can remove it. Now, in terms of our whole list here, so I've just expanded it to 30 rows. That's the biggest you can go, so when you get 250 like me, it's a lot of devices. When you're doing the search here, really the search that you have access to is the device label or the device name. 
So don't search necessarily thinking that you can get the execution area. These are just things that you can organize the table by. So if you click on that, you can see the cloud ones have gone to the top and the local ones at the bottom. Now I've just reversed that. So that's your, your option for search and filtering this table. Now I can go into any device. I can edit the name right here, but that's all I have right now to edit. So we're in this device called the A19. I can edit it here. I see the device name. This is something just kind of set by SmartThings in a lot of cases, uh, although there are interfaces where you can change that. Now, the device ID, I can see the profile. I can see its network ID if it has one. This doesn't because it's by manufacturer Wiz and it's their model of A19 bulb, and this is the type. So this is the device type. This is how it gets some of its attributes, the edge drivers it can use, or the drivers it's using today. I can adjust the room really quickly, and I can add a room here again. I can copy lots of these things. From an attribute standpoint, you can see everything that it's doing at the moment. So I can see the values. Here's the color temperature. Here's the level at the moment. But is it on? Nope, it's off. I can see all of that. And again, I could search most of those things. Down here are commands that you can execute with your device. So this is an A19 bulb. I can hit on, okay? It says up here, ran command on successfully. So just turn that on. My kids downstairs with this bulb is. You can go, that light was turning on and off. Uh, that'll be fun for me. You can also ping to test the health of this bulb. Each one of these things has a different format. You're gonna find that format right here. So here's the saturation, it's currently set at 96. And when I go in here, let's say I tried to put in a thousand, watch, right here. This value should be a hundred or less. So uh, that that's telling me the format I can put in. I can play with those things. Here's the hue, okay? Right now it's at hue 12. I don't know what those hues mean. You'd have to do some testing and just watch the bulb go, okay? Uh, you can set the level. You can set a circadian rhythm. So I can hit that, state, stop or run, uh, time zone ID. That one, you'd have to figure out what that is to put in there. And again, right here, you can see these values. So it, it does actually have my time zone in it right now. I don't have to worry about that. It's in there. Uh, and that's gonna be set on my location. So you have all of these options to fill out all of these commands. Uh, I have yet to see a lot of preferences, but here's the events. So this is me going through, you can see the values changing. This is great for diagnosing problems. So if you're not seeing something update when you would expect it to, okay, come check here, make sure that it's going into the system. And if it's not, then you got a different problem. Now let's go back to our list of devices and let's look at something that's Z-Wave instead of being a cloud executing device. So here's AOTEC's ARQ sensor, a great little sensor with a lot of different things on it. You can see it has the driver associated with it. So when you have the edge driver, there it is. I can manage the hub's drivers and I can see the network ID, but I'm not seeing some of the details like what this is directly connected to from a Z-Wave standpoint. Attributes are down here so you can see those different ones. And of course I can do the searching. Here's the commands. The only one I get for a sensor like this is a refresh and I don't have any preferences. So this is kind of what you're gonna see. I'll show you a Zigbee device. This is a Zigbee motion sensor. Again, I'm getting all of this information for the driver, the network ID, who the manufacturer is, okay? All that is in here. I have all my different values. So you can see the battery value uh, and I can see even the firmware on this one. So then I can scroll down. I can look for firmware updates. It's kind of a good thing to have. So I can check for firmware. So now my current firmware, 
it's the same, the available version is the same as the current version, but if it wasn't, if I had a newer available version, I could hit update firmware. So that's actually a really useful thing if you've been waiting for a firmware to publish. So on this one, we do have a preference. Now it's called temperature offset. Okay, and I can't edit it yet, but these kinds of things, Samsung has said, yeah, this, it's coming, so it'll just take time. Samsung, you never know how long it's gonna take. But what you're seeing in the preferences is what you get right here in your settings page on your device. So I just went up to the top here, uh, hard for me to show, but I just went up to settings and into settings, there's my temperature offset. That's what you're getting in here. And that's what you can at least look at. You can't edit it today, but in the future, you'll be able to edit some of those. Events are right here. You can see things are changing, active, inactive. That's the motion. You can see the temperature, it's all in here. And again, I can search. That's more or less the devices tab today. Obviously you can organize things however you'd like and you have a jump to just to go back to there. But let's go to scenes. Now within scenes, we have the ability to run any of your scenes. So this can be an interface, just open up on your computer, sitting here. I noticed it logs out sometimes, so you might have to log back in depending on uh, how long you step away. But in general, it's there. And one of the really nice things is a lot of new icons. Here. So if you want to change your icon, this is a really fast way. They all load in. It's really nice. I know some uh, iPhone users are having trouble getting these to load right now. So it's really nice there. Now I can go into any of these scenes and in the future you can see scene actions are read only for now. To create or update, please use the SmartThings app. But you see that little grayed out button? It looks like we're going to be able to execute individual scene actions within this kind of an interface. It's really interesting, it tells me a little bit about where Samsung's actually headed in general, but uh, we can run the scene from the top, I can make these edit adjustments within here, and I can see the execution location. That's really important for your scenes, obviously important for your devices, but device plus scene, you know, if they're all local, well then your automation is probably gonna run locally. So for right now, you could just see what's going on, what the command is within each of these actions within your scenes, okay? There's not a lot more you're gonna see, but if you have multiple things going on, okay? And, and you know, here's the saturation value that I put in to the app when I created that. So if I wanna use that somewhere else, I showed you in the devices, you can put in a saturation. Well, there's the saturation value, there's the hue value of what I've created in the scene. So this is a way to kind of pull out or extract that information from things you've done in the app in the past. Again, you have the ability to filter by the different locations in your home, and you can organize by any of these things when you created them and uh, the, the locations that they're in. But let's go to the installed apps. Now, the installed apps, they give you a type. I think this is gonna become more important as we go forward, uh, because like here's, this is a web hook. So this is a cloud-based thing. These ones, Lambda Smart App, these are part of the Labs feature in the SmartThings app. So that's where those are coming from. Again, I can edit the app name. I can delete these apps if I don't want them. Uh, there's not necessarily a lot you can do with these because it's fairly technical information coming out of this. So, you know, when I go down here to the configurations, it's gonna be really different per app what the config that I have and I don't have any edit buttons. So I don't think this one's really useful for you to go into the details on, um, but even things like the SmartThings cooking, the SmartThings energy, these are all here. You can see a little bit of information about them uh, and that's about all you're gonna get at this point. So now having this interface open, yeah, I think it's pretty useful, but you know, the other side of it, I showed you this 
earlier. So here we are, this is still in beta, but this is more like the dashboard you can build for yourself. And there's a couple different ways you can build dashboards. Like you can do it all in the SmartThings app, but I think a lot of people will really like how this works. So we have a number of different sections that we can go into. You can see dashboard rooms and automations, okay? So this is partly how you can get to some of your automations. It's a little different right now because they're still building this. You also have the ability to manage the location. Uh, you can go back to that advanced user segment there and then you have settings and you can change between your different locations. So if I just want a different interface for this other location, which can help to kind of break things out, you have a different dashboard. So what I was trying to explain there is you have a different dashboard, you have different rooms, you have different automations in each location, right? So you can kind of break up your home upstairs, downstairs, as long as you're not having automations go between those two locations. So within our dashboard, you can see that I've placed in the scenes, uh, the smart home monitor, these are all here and all of our rooms are here as well. All our rooms are of course over here. Inside of the rooms, right now it says drag devices here. I can't do this for some reason, but what I can do is I can go into these three little dots. I can manage the room so I could change the name or I could delete it or I can manage the devices and then I can hit this. So if I want that to be a favorited device, there I go. And I can also bring in other things into the room. So, okay, there I go. I just added the Zoo's power strip to the room. I also favorited the Zoo's S2 multi siren. Now, when I go over to my dashboard, you see all those other rooms disappeared. So I know initially it looked a little funny, but here it is. And I have control of this. So I can click here for the basic control. That's a siren, I'm not gonna click that. Or I can click on the name or the rest of it and I can see all the different information here. So this is giving me all my activity history again, and uh, you can even click on more, and it will load in more of those things. I have a refresh button to get more information, and I can see everything about this device. Plus I have a siren and a strobe toggle that I can go between for just a multi-siren. Then I can edit the settings, but it's not totally comprehensive like the app, you have a little less settings you can do there. For other devices, like if you're just in the room page, okay, let's say I wanna turn on my basement office lights. There, I just did, okay? The, the devices are controllable through this. So you have this full interface, you can see everything going on in your home and you can click into any of these to get all the activity and all the other settings that you can have. So there, I could turn off that light, which I've been turning on. Inside of automations, I have all my scenes, some of them I've favorited in the app. I can turn these all on, I can click on any of them, they'll execute, you get little information uh, pieces about those. I can also go into all of these different automation segments, okay? But what you're not gonna find are just the full list of routines that you have in here yet. It's not here yet. Okay, I can go into like my SmartThings home monitor and I can go through the configuration of that. And I can make adjustments if I'd like, if I don't wanna use all the open close sensors, I can do that and I can select the ones that I'd like, right? So if I don't wanna use that one, okay, there. Now a bunch of them are selected, but I'm not using them all. Then you have all of the settings that you get in the app here in a lot of cases. You might be missing one or two things, but in general, you're gonna have what you need to set up this system. So now I can close this window, it's come back. So it's the same with Smart Lock Guest Access. This is SmartThings Energy. I actually haven't gone in here yet, but okay, this is all we're getting. I can get some report and tips. No, can't do anything. So some of these things, yeah, they're not totally done. You're not gonna be able to do everything within them. You have that other advanced interface that I think is gonna fill in the gaps here where they will not do it um, from this visual standpoint. But obviously you can go into a lot of these things. I mean, I still have the old smart lightings automations. These are still 
running in my house. I know Smart Things said they were going to get rid of it, but <laughs> they haven't got rid of it. I still have the ability to configure these fully, like uh, I have in the app. So that's actually pretty nice for me. I wish uh, all of it was here. The uh, labs features. So I showed you like gentle wake up. Okay. I can go into this and I can configure this kind of a thing. So anything you add from labs, you have access to here. The other things you can have a look at here, you can manage the location. So, you know, okay, geolocation isn't here right now, but it's usually there. The Celsius, the Fahrenheit, you can pick those things, delete your location. Uh, going to that advanced users, yeah, that's the, the other page you're going back to. And then you have settings. So this will help you manage whether or not your account stays signed in or how long. So if I uncheck that, I can choose a session length that you, you feel secure with, okay? So I, I feel pretty secure with eight, and now I hit done, I'm happy there. All right, Automator, so now you can use this whole web interface. I think it's pretty powerful. It's not perfect yet, but one of the things that I've shown in the past is a better interface for managing those more advanced things. You start to diagnose some of those Zigbee and Z-Wave issues, and you can edit a little bit more, and that is in the video that's up on screen now. Okay, this is the best edge drivers you need to install. It's the best features you'll get out of SmartThings and it's broken down into those different segments that you'll want so you can get that better interface. Otherwise, thanks for watching today and of course, don't hate, automate.